I've been asked to give you a little devotion, like a, like a worship. Uh, and uh, I know during this season, we hear a lot about the birth of Jesus. And of course, it is the celebration of the birth of Jesus, no doubt about it. And uh, this is the season that uh, we decorate our homes, we wear nice clothes, there are so many things, good food, many, many, many things happen. I was always fascinated uh, to know about the Christmas tree. I always want to know why a tree is put during Christmas season. Have you ever thought about that? You know, we understand the manger, we understand the nativity scene, but what is the reason for a Christmas tree? In the Bible, in Genesis chapter 2, what does the Word of God say? God created this world, and when He created Adam and Eve, uh, He created a garden, a beautiful garden, correct? And uh, He planted a tree, that's what the Bible says. I need to get to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 8. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put men whom he had formed. And out of the ground, the Lord God made every tree to grow that is pleasant to the sight of God. And the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So there is a special tree that we all know of in the Garden of Eden. There was a very special tree. We know about that story, right? And the test of Adam and Eve's faithfulness was strictly based upon this one fruit from this tree. The entire faith of the human race was based upon this one single fruit from this one single tree. Wow! Imagine it. Look at it. God made this perfect world, perfect creation, perfect universe, angels. Everything was there. And Adam and Eve could have anything they want. They could do anything they want to do. They can go anywhere they want. Everything was given. No questions asked. Except for this one single fruit. What does the Bible say? We go down to chapter 3. Very quickly. Very quickly. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6. It reads, So when the woman saw that the tree was what? Tree was good. Is that tree was a beautiful tree. It had the fruit of good of knowledge and good, good and evil. And the women saw that particular tree was good. Of all the trees, of all the things God created, that one particular tree. Now, don't ask me why. <laughs> don't ask me why. You know, when God says that one thing, don't do, don't go near, don't eat that, that is the one thing that looks very good, right? Just that one thing, the same thing. Adam and Eve could have gone into the universe, into the other solar planets, into the other solar system, anywhere, and they could have done anything they want. But they ought to keep away from this one tree and one fruit. Trouble starts. When Eve saw that the tree was good for food, tree and food, temptation starts. It was pleasant to her eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of its fruit and what did it do? She she ate. That's it. There comes the fall of man. There was this one tree. 
There was this one fruit. And here we are, you and me, the fallen mankind. Right? That's where the story starts. But when, when we read the word of God, from Genesis to Revelation, there is a continual reference to a person's life to a tree. Have you noticed that? There are hundreds of scriptures. Either it refers to the branches or to the leaves or to the roots or to the fruits. Somehow, somewhere, our life has still connected back to this one good tree that God made. Now, what did God do? There is a beautiful narration in Bible. I don't know if you have Bibles on your phone or smartphones or somewhere if you want to open this. It's a good reading. It's a good reading. And I recommend you open this to Isaiah chapter 5. Beautiful phrase. It is a a symbolic expression of God as the gardener and you and me as the tree or as the plant that grows. Look what God says, my beloved, let me sing to you a well-beloved song. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. The vineyard is you and me. And when he talks about my beloved, it refers to God having a vineyard. And where was this established? On a very fruitful hill. That means it was a very good place. He dug it up and cleared out of it from all the stones. Right? So the, the garden keeper, God, was very good. He found a good spot on the hill. He cleared the stones. He dug the ground. He did everything to plant the seed. And planted it with the choicest vine, the best seed. He built a tower in the midst of the garden. Now, why do you think they built towers? These towers were built so that when the garden flourishes, the garden keeper goes up on the top of the tower to protect the garden from any strangers or theft or destruction or any animals coming and destroying the garden. So he made, he built a tower and also made a wine press in it. He expected it to bring forth good fruits. You see the little narration God has given here about how he planted the tree? On a hill, good ground, good seed. He cleared, he dug, he removed the stones. He put a high tower, a watchtower. He put a fence. He did everything for this seed to bring what? Good fruits. Then the Bible says, what more could he have done to this tree? What more could he have done to this tree? What more could he do to this tree that I have not done? When then, when I expected it to bring good grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? The gardener did everything that he can do to plant the seed on a mountain top, a good ground. He dug the ground, he took the stones, he planted the best seed, and he was waiting for the best fruit. What more could I have done that I have not done as the Lord. And he was disappointed. Why do I have this bitter fruit? As we celebrate Christmas, as we think about the tree, I want you to ask this question that God is asking to each one of us. What more could I have done for you? I've done everything for you. The Bible says, they did not bring good fruits. Now, I'm not going to stand here and say that you don't have good fruits, but I'm going to ask you a question that you can answer yourself, whether you bring good fruits 
or sour fruits. What more could God do to you? You know, this question is a rhetorical question. Their answer is within. It says, there is nothing more God can do. God has done everything. And the passage is very sad. It says, you know, what more could I do than I have done? When I'm expecting it to bring forth good grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? And now, please let me tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedges and it shall be burnt. Because the Lord says, I've done everything that I can do. But I don't see any good fruits. You see, the tree in the Garden of Eden, the tree, that one fruit that brought mankind down, your life, my life, God always compares to a tree, is a running theme in the entire book of Bible, in the Word of God. And I was uh, reading about the Christmas tree, and, and in those early Roman Christian era, the first century, in order to explain the birth of Christ, they explained the fall of man. And they would put this big tree with all the fruits, and they will drag this tree around the town and enact the Garden of Eden and act like somebody ate the fruit and sin came in, and then Savior is born, joy to the world. So I'm also trying to give you the concept of how the tree came inside. The pagans also did the tree as a festive ceremony. They had branches hanging around the houses, fig trees, fig branches. And there in the earlier days, in the 13th century or in the 12th century, the tree was not usually placed like this. It said the tree was usually hung upside down. The trunk was up and the branches were down and then they go around and decorate the tree. So there were many, many different concepts of this tree assuring and putting a lot of good golden fruits around it, apples and the best fruits around the tree, bringing it into the house and recreating the tree that was there in the Garden of Eden, Eden before the fall of man. You see, today we decorate a beautiful tree and we put all the glitters and all the shines and all the lights and everything that we can do to bring joy and to bring that, wow, it has the roots tied all the way to the Garden of Eden where that was a good tree, where there was a good fruit, where, but God said, don't go and eat that fruit. When he compares to your life and my life, he looks at every one of us one by one and asks this question, what could I have done more with you in your life? I've done everything for you. My dear friends, the Lord likes to take inventory every once in a while, doesn't he? You know? He brought you thus far. He's given you a good life. He's given you what you want. And when the good Lord looks at you and me and says, I've done everything for you, where are the good fruits? Where are the good fruits? Where is it? You know, you read in uh, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 16. The uh, Bible also explains about this uh, good tree and good fruits. Uh, very clearly, the Bible says that if a tree, chapter 7, you will know them by what? You'll know them by the fruits. Do men gather grapes from the thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit. But bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear a good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know who they are. What could I have done more, my son? What could I have done more, my brother, my daughter, my child? The Lord is asking us, in a time like this, when we have everything, 
the Lord questions us. I have done everything. What more could I have done for you? Is this all you have? When a good tree is supposed to bring good fruit, the Lord is asking, how come? I've made you perfect. I've given you everything. Why do you destroy your body? Why do you waste your energy? Why are you into these bad habits? How come your life does not have the result that I want? It is in times like this. We not only worship the birth of Christ, but we also listen to the calling of the Savior. What more could I do? I even died for you on the cross. I gave my life. I emptied heaven and came down, born in the manger as a child. What more can I do? Won't you give your life to me? Won't you give your heart to me? The Bible says there's another beautiful passage, you know, Matthew chapter 21, just a few passages along. When Jesus was here on earth, he was walking by. Now, in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. Who was hungry? Who are we talking about? I just want to see if you're listening to me. Okay, Jesus was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but what? But leaves. What was not found? What was he looking for? Jesus was looking for fruits. And he found nothing but leaves. As we celebrate a monumental event of the universe, the birth of Jesus. Today, Jesus is looking at you. He's looking at you. He's looking at me. He's looking at everyone. He's not looking whether you have a new dress or not. He's not looking whether you have a brand name shoe or a brand name bag or a good makeup or a good haircut or a nice bow tie. God is not looking what you have or how much bank balance you have or what degree you have or what did you do. God is not looking for anything. God is saying, what more could I do to you? I am looking for fruits in your life. I'm hungry. Take a minute and think about it. We are so caught up about me myself. I need to do this. I need this. I need this. I need this. And that's exactly what the devil wants us to do. Think about me, me, me every day. All about me. I have done everything for you. And the Lord looks at you and me tonight. And he says, where are the fruits? I planted a good seed. I put you on the mountaintop. I dug the ground. I put good soil. I put a fence around. I put the best seed in your life. I put a big tower and I put a watchman to watch over you day and night. You're going out and you're coming. But I don't see no fruit. See, my friends, we not only celebrate the birth of Jesus, but tonight we need to celebrate the birth of the Holy Spirit in our life. See, that's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. Now, we cannot go to Jesus, to Bethlehem, to worship Jesus without the Holy Spirit. Many Christians today have been Christians for their whole life. Being baptized once by the Holy Spirit is not good enough. Word of God says that you need to be baptized every day, morning by morning. New mercies, new baptism, new renewal in your life. And then you will see the fruits. The fruits of the Spirit. That the Bible talks about. Jesus says, he was hungry and he found no fruit. Then he said, uh, he looked at the tree and Jesus was not happy. And he cursed the tree, and the tree withered. Now there is hope for you and me, 
And this is not a message of condemning. This is supposed to be a season of joy. This is supposed to be a joy of happiness. And the joy is found right here. If you read that passage down, God says that I am going to do this for you. He says in, in uh, Matthew chapter 20, 21 and verse 19, he says, I am going to dig this tree around. You see, the Lord pleads here saying, his, his servants plead and say, give me one more year. Don't curse the tree. Lord, wait. I can guarantee there will be fruit next year. You wait, please. I will dig. I will put some soil. I will make sure the tree grows. Lord, if you will give me time and come next year, there will be fruit. That's what is Jesus doing with your life and my life. He's pleading in front of the Father saying, give my child, my son, my daughter one more year. As we turn to this new year, Christmas brings in a celebration of a new year, the beginning of new life, everything new. There is a Savior pleading for you and me, saying that tree will be fruitful next year. Oh, my friends, it doesn't matter how our tree has been in the past, but let us yield ourselves to the digging and the tilling and the tearing and the pushing of the Holy Spirit in our life so that our tree will grow and bring forth fruits. David says in Psalms 1, Blessed is the man. What kind of man he will be? He will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and bring forth fruits in the due course of time. That's a Christian life. That's why we put a tree in our home. That's why we celebrate the joy of the fruits during Christmas. It's just not Jesus as a baby in the Bethlehem, but also to be a fruitful tree, a flourishing tree. That tree that we lost in the Garden of Eden is still remembered today because in Revelation chapter 22, beautiful passage, Bible says that that tree will be one day by God's help regained. Word of God says, and the tree of life, it's a beautiful tree. It bore 12 fruits each yielding fruits every month and the fruits and the leaves were a healing. And the Bible says, blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have right back to the tree. God planted a garden. There once was a tree. God said, don't eat of the tree. That's exactly what Eve did. And our tree, our life has become fruitless today. But that same tree, God says, blessed are those who do his commandment. That's as simple as that. Keeping God's commandment. That they may have the right to the tree of life. My friends, my wish for you today, tonight... My Christmas wish is not Merry Christmas. I'm not wishing you for joy. I'm not wishing you to be happy. I'm wishing you to be fruitful. The Lord is pleading, saying, what more can I do to you? I've done everything. All right, give me one more year. Here is our chance. Here is our chance, one more year. Can we put aside the things that we should put aside? Can we resist the things that are hard for us to resist? Can we say no to the things that we should be saying no to and doing the things that we should do? And keep the commandments of God so that we will regain that tree, that fruit that we can eat and live with God. We not only celebrate Christmas, then we will be in heaven and God himself will be with us. And we will have a great dinner with him. And that should be the longing of a Christmas. My wish for you, my friends, in this new year, in this celebration as we celebrate Christmas, that we will desire to be a fruitful tree. God bless you.